the signboards of a Jewish restaurant smashed. A pig head marked with a Star of David dumped by a door. Swastikas and Stars of David daubed on a wall. This was the aftermath of an anti-Semitic attack in the eastern German city of Chemnitz in August 2018. It was just one of more than 1,600 anti-Semitic crimes committed in Germany last year. That's an increase of 10% on 2017. Particularly worrying, the number of violent incidents, like this one in Berlin, has increased by two-thirds. I am concerned, but not really surprised. It fits with what I hear from Jewish organizations and representatives when I talk to them. It should give us the impetus to take preventative action soon and to make sure that anti-Semitism does not arise in the first place. Much of this hatred comes from far-right supporters, but experts say some of it derives from opposition to Israel, including from migrants from the Muslim world. And Germany is not alone. Anti-Semitic incidents are becoming more common in other countries too. France this week reported a rise of more than 70% in 2018 compared with the previous year. Unfortunately, anti-Semitism is on the advance everywhere in Europe. We need to find European solutions. I support the idea of making the fight against anti-Semitism a priority for the German EU presidency next year. Another part of the picture in Germany is that the Jewish community is growing and demonstrations of solidarity with them by non-Jews are common. While most Germans recognize that from the Holocaust comes a special responsibility to protect Jews, there is sadly still a minority ready to turn violent aggression against them. Well, joining us in the studio for more on all of these developments is Anastasia Platuchina. She chairs a Jewish student organization here in Berlin, and she also works for other Jewish institutions in Germany. Anastasia, thanks so much for being with us. So, I mean, we just saw in this report some pretty disturbing statistics, um, anti-Semitic offenses on the rise in Germany. How does that make you feel? Are, are you afraid? Actually, um, afraid is not the right term for me personally. Um, I think that we already faced um, anti-Semitic um, um, thoughts and um, also deeds uh, in, in Germany before, but now uh, we can target them and now we can focus on what's happening. And um, that makes me feel strong, actually, that now we, we have tools to address this problem. So what about your personal experience? Have you encountered any kind of discrimination or even attack personally? Yes, for sure. Um, that was mostly connected to anti-Israel um, politics. And um, yeah, that was pretty scary, um, especially on the streets when the demonstrations um, in 2014 started. And uh, that was a very scary moment for me because I used to work in a Jewish community and um, I was literally afraid to step out of the building because I didn't know what will happen to me outside. Um, so yes, for sure. And can you tell us a little bit more in detail what happened? What were people saying or how were they behaving? Um, they were screaming uh, that uh, Jews ha um, have to be gassed um, in the chambers and um, that's the rhetoric um, we are not used to or uh, we connect definitely to Holocaust rhetoric and that's definitely very scary. And could you identify who were those people shouting those slogans? Um, those um, slogans were connected to uh, a demonstration, connected to um, anti-Israel uh, demonstration, um, connected again to uh, the Gaza war. So actually it wasn't something about Jews in Germany, but the switch was very fast. All right. Well. Um I also want to ask you about your work within the Jewish community. I know you're active in a number of different uh, institutions and organizations. Um, how important is it for you to be visible in your work? After 2014, um, it became more important to me, especially because I saw that um, 
this, um, as I said, switch from anti-Israel to anti-Semitic um, is very fast and actually it implains that the same. And uh, I think that uh, that was the moment when I personally understood that um, it's important to invest more in the education, education and um, fight this. Well, well, speaking of education, I really want to ask you quickly, if you can, to explain to us the work you do with an initiative called Rent a Jew. It sounds very strange. What yeah, is it about? It sounds very provocative. And that's exactly the goal. Um, it's an educational program to um, give an opportunity to educational institutions like schools to uh, meet real Jews, because most of uh, the main population in Germany just heard about Jewish society in Germany, but never spoke to any person from this community. And that brings people together and uh, develops a dialogue. All right, Anastasia Platushina, thank you so very much for being with us today. Thank you.